Hey everyone, welcome back to Kari Plants. Me again, Mark. Today we're back at the greenhouse, and for this video, we're gonna be talking about our variegated succulents. So you can see here all the arrangement that I've made, and also we have our coffee right there because it's early in the morning. I'm actually shooting this early in the morning because I haven't been able to shoot a video again yesterday. So now let me just switch the camera. We'll go over the plants, the variegated succulents that we have, and along the way, I'm gonna be sharing you tips on how to care for them. So you can see here, these are all the variegated succulents that I have. These are not very expensive ones. Actually, they're very affordable. You can try them out. And later on, probably, I will buy more expensive succulents as well. So now, let me just go on with the ones that are not very popular. This is variegated truncata, a Haworthia. I've had this for more than a year, I believe. And it's one of the slower growing Haworthias. Actually, all of my other expensive Haworthias are very slow in my care. But now, I'm seeing more growth on them after adding more organic materials to their potting mix. So we have that. And you can see the nice variegation on this. Other variegated Haworthias are actually very expensive and very attractive. This is just one that is the more affordable, more common variegated Haworthia. But there are Haworthias out there that look like candies because they are very variegated and they're very, very nice. But yeah, for me, this one, it ha I haven't been able to make this one fatter, so I don't know how to make that. Probably I will move this in a much more cooler location probably when I get my grow lights someday I will be investing on grow lights soon okay so we have that we have our crassulas here let's just go over the crassulas before we go to the more popular ones so this is my variegated um, volkensii you can see here all the lush growth that it has and actually I'm I'm hanging it on there on the top of there but you can see all the lush growth that it has made and it's really really nice it doesn't look like a succulent that is a rosette shape okay it looks more like an ordinary plant kind of looks like an aptinia really but this is a crassula and I really really like it it has some drought tolerance you can neglect it for a few days and it won't drop all the leaves that it has but once you consistently water it it produces more growth and I have seen uh, this plant before when it was still new it was pinkish in color pinkish white but now it has transitioned into more creamy yellow and green colors okay so probably because of the change in light in my area so I don't know what makes it pink and what it makes it white so yeah I'm still gonna observe this because we're currently getting more sun in the Philippines because we're going into the summer season um, I will post post updates if this changes colors with more sunlight but this one is really easy to take care of you just have to add a lot more organic materials into its potting mix so that you can make it grow okay so we have that and we also have this um, variegated portulacaria afra okay i have the ordinary version and this is the variegated one i can say the variegated one um, probably because it's still new it grows a little bit slower but it still consistently grows and i really like the trailing habit that it has and the purplish stems that it has okay so you can grow this as a hanging plant or you can also bonsai it if you want you just have to train your stems so that they grow upright i don't know if this can be trained but i'm not going to be bonsaiing it i'm just going to let it grow probably i will add it in a future uh, arrangement but i believe that this one when it first came it only had a few stems i think it was this stem and this stem but now it has really gotten long and yeah this was actually growing in my rain or shine a location over there so I haven't been caring for it much and it just continuously grows so that is one easy variegated succulent you can try also we have another version of the same plant this is Porto Lacaria Afra Variegata but this is I don't know what they call the reverse variegation okay yeah probably this is the reverse variegated because the variegation here starts on the center and not on the sides so the variegation on this other one is on the sides and this one is the pink um, portula cariapra once you get it to grow continuously and get more light the new growth will start out as pink leaves and then they will transition into variegated green and white or cre cream colored leaves so we have that our variegated portula cariapra okay really really nice and it still has that compact look probably it will elongate later once it gets less sun here in my location okay going back to the rest of our crassula collection that are variegated we have our variegated um, tom thumb or 
baby necklace okay i don't know if this is the marnie marnie rihanna okay it's not the most uh, beautiful succulent right away because it's not a compact one this one looks rangy but i really really like the look of this plant you can see all the variegation that it has on its leaves very consistent it doesn't seem to be losing its variegation not as easy as this one which i feel like it has lost a lot of its variegation when i wasn't caring for it that well but this one has retained a lot of its variegation and you can see it's performing really well you can see all the pups that it is growing so yeah i'm just gonna probably plant this in a bigger container so that we can propagate it a lot more okay really really nice snake like um carsola perforata variegated succulent okay so that is a really really nice variegation on a carsola we have our candy cane I have shown this several times we still have to plant it in our pink pot okay but you can see this one is a more much more pinkish colored variegation compared with your other ones which are yellow or light green this one has pinkish colored variegation which is why it's called crassula candy cane what i noticed with this plant really its variegation are very very stable it doesn't lose that variegation a lot even if it's in a shady location so it still retains that variegation on there you just have to water it when the leaves are kind of wrinkled at the bottom and you also have to add a lot more organic materials in its potting mix but once you make it consistently grow it will branch out you can see all the new branches that it's producing yeah and it's really really nice upright growing crassula it's kind of related with your campfire and if you have already seen variegated campfire that one is also red and pink in color so that's what you would expect with the crassula candy cane okay really really nice if you're looking for this plant um, check out the succulent bucket on Facebook um, Mam Satilin Sanil Saltin she sells those really nice pink grasslands okay we have our next this is a much more on the green side variegation this is your variegated ripple jade okay I don't know if this is a ripple jade or if it's another different type of grassula but this is a variegated grassula ovata and you can see all the nice color that it has and the wavy leaves that it has okay really really interesting it has a lot of different textural and colorful unique unique appearances on it so it's really really unique and i kind of like the variegation on this one it reminds you of a of a paint that has been stroked on the leaf so it's like it's painted like someone has took a brush of light colored paint and just brush it on the leaf and that's what it reminds me of and i really really like it has the creamy like look and i just want to see how this one will grow probably i will give more sun give it consistent sun and probably i will be able to make it grow in a rain or shine location because that really looks good if you add it into a special arrangement so i'm thinking of that right now really okay the next one we have is the burgundy crassula this is one that is very thirsty when it comes to its watering you have to be very consistent with the watering of this plant because it's very thin leaf so you want to take note of it if it's getting flappy like that just water it because it's one of those thin leaf succulents but once you make it grow once you make it established you can keep it consistently growing you just have a weed here let me just take it okay. so you can make it consistently grow it branches out a lot you can see all the branches that it has under it so really really nice clumping type of uh, grassella okay and i really like the look of it and the texture that it has because it has this nice fuzzy type leaves that is one if you want to have some other texture in your collection okay moving on moving on so we have this um, crassula i know not crassula this is a variegated ice plant pickle plant i don't know the exact id anymore i think i forgot but this one i've had this for a while and it's like your other ice plants that it kind of gets very thirsty very quickly but you can see here the pickle plant you have the normal pickle plant which is much more green and this is the lighter colored one and i think that this is really variegated it has this fuzzy fuzzy leaves that you can touch okay and mine has been growing pretty erect okay it's been growing upright but i believe that it can also trail once it continuously grows okay we have that this is our um, crassula perforata i've shown this before and what i would say with this one if you give it less light 
okay you can you might be able to lose the variegation on that because yeah the variegation disappears once you give it less light but once you consistently make it grow again the new growth will just produce these variegated leaves and it looks like it's glowing really once you see that observe that new growth it looks like it's gl glowing because of the variegation that it has and i think this is one of the more common Cressula that you can buy that is variegated okay but you just have to be careful about it give it more sun and with more sun that will also mean that the plant will need a lot more organic material and a lot more frequent watering so that you can make it grow okay my camera is really not focusing well so we have that and let's move on to the next one this is our um, variegated Joyce Tulok I always wanted this plant even though not a lot of people like it but I haven't had any success with my earlier attempts on this variegated sedum. But right now, it's been pretty consistent in its growth. I added more Alnus compost in its potting mix. Okay, so we have that. You can see the new variegation on, the, on that. I think it kind of goes into the more pinkish, cream, white, and green colors. Okay, so that's really, really nice. And I really, really like this sedum. It's a clumping type of sedum. And I'm just going to make sure to grow more of this someday so maybe we can make it grow a little more okay we have that we also have our variegated pachyveria abocarinata and this is not variegated when it came it just developed those white variegation once i have been growing it in a full sun location and this one along with the variegation it also has some nice mutated leaves that you won't find in other common succulents so that is a nice mutated pachyveria and if you already have experience with the albocarinata with the shidekuri, um, you could probably get those leaves from the same normal looking plant. So you might be able to buy a plant that looks like a topsy-turvy, but once you give it more sun and less watering, those kind of leaves will start to appear because it, the leaves really change depending on your care for the plant. Okay, so we have that. We also have this one, our Graptophytum Supreme or pachyphytoides okay i think that's what they call it pachyphytoides variegata this is probably a pachyphytum like a very hybrid okay you can see the new growth that it has that's a new reset and this is the, i think the crested part of the plant and you can see the variegation on this one is not bright anymore so yeah that's what happened with it in my care and the new growth is also not showing any signs of variegation Okay, so I still have to figure that out. I might need to put it in a much more brighter location because some variegation succulents really are not very um, stable and some will disappear if you don't give it a lot of sunlight. So sometimes they will also burn because they have less chlor chlorophyll and they are much more weaker compared to your normal succulents. So you have to be mindful of what type of light conditions that you have in your area before you start growing a lot of these variegated succulents so but sometimes some variegation will stay consistent okay so you can see this has been growing in a partially filtered sun location okay it's kind of in a shady filtered sun location but the variegation on this one is consistent so you have to experiment what variegation stays on your plants in the location that you have because sometimes some variegations will disappear we also have here our variegated suyon i think this one goes into the more pinkish and white colors once you manage to keep it consistently growing this one is still establishing so i'm not watering this too often Okay, but you can see all the nice variegation that it has on its new growth okay once you manage to grow it more probably you will get whiter colored variation this one filled, feels like it's lost its variegation because it's started out i think this one was brighter in color when i bought it but once it dried out because it's still rooting up it kind of got a much more dull looking leaves okay so that's what you could probably expect with your uh, make a very suyon okay you just have to be patient for it to produce brighter colored variegation okay now onto the next this is our variegated pearl von nurnberg this is the echeveria west rainbow a lot of people have been asking for care tips on this one and i really like it, it has this nice purplish white and pink colors 
Okay, this is actually the Vergate version of the um, Pearl Van Arnberg. I've shown it on my live. Okay, so that is the same plant. If you want to have success with the Pearl Van Arnberg, you have to add a lot more organic materials into its potting mix because it's a thin leaf succulent and thin leaf succulents actually need to have something to attach to in their soil. They don't want to be necessarily planted in pure pumice because they will desiccate a lot. So that is what I would also recommend with my with the variegated uh, West Rainbow, variegated Pearl Van Arnberg. You can see all the potty mix that I have here. It has a lot of compost, not pure pumice on there. Okay, so this one is still kind of flappy. I still have to water it because it's in a small container. But the new leaves are much more firmer. So that's telling me that it's not thoroughly, thoroughly dry. So I might just have to water this today, probably, after recording this video. Okay, so we have that really really nice variegated succulent okay the next one we have is our variegated momoka okay this is one of the more common variegated echeverias right now really affordable really cheap and you can see the growth of the variegation on this one is not as um not as large as your other variegated succulents okay the variegation on this one is much more even on the leaves kind of has that stripy appearance on the leaves okay so that's what the momoka has it doesn't have pure um, variegated leaves okay but it's really really nice and i really really like it it's been a tough succulent for me and the variegation has been consistent so far you can see all the new growth it has it still has those variegation even in the same condition that i have with my other succulents so that one you can probably rely on the variegation of that okay so we have that we have our variegated apricot variegated tito buns recently bottom watered it because it's been dry for a very long time so let me check on the bottom leaves okay it's kind of firm okay and i planted it in a smaller container because it wasn't drying up that fast in its old container but you can see the variegation on this one has stayed pretty nice pretty consistent okay this can also produce purely variegated uh, stems and this actually used to have a pure variegated stem at the bottom it used to have a pop like that but it died okay i think i underwatered it and the stem shrunk and i had to remove it because it wasn't looking good and once you have those purely variegated stems you won't be able to root them because they don't have any chlorophyll to make them grow and if you remove the purely variegated stems from the main plant it will not survive so i would recommend that uh, you just keep it growing on the plant if you have a pure variegated head uh, head that has pure variegation on the leaves so you can tell the variegation okay on this one is on the sides and not on the center okay so some other call that reverse variegation depending on the commonality of the variegation on succulents sometimes reverse variegation will have variegation in the center but some others call the variegation on the side on the side of the leaves some other calls that the reverse variegation so it really depends upon the plant okay but this one is the more common one also very easy to propagate because it has nice thick leaves and it has this clumping habit and it's also very affordable very popular here with the benguet propagators that we have in the philippines you can already buy this one from our benguet sellers but this used to be just a korean import succulent okay so we have that we're down to our last three echeverias okay so this is uh, the older one that i have this is variegated decora and i really really like this it has already produced its head again it already is producing new leaves and i really like the variegation on this one it has this nice clean variegated leaves that is not that not that stripy compared with the other one okay it has this much more blocks much more thicker lines of variegation the variegated decora also very affordable but it's a gibby floor hybrid so you can make it you can expect it to grow larger it's not a very compact succulent probably you can keep it compact if you plant it in a smaller container but i really really like the large leaves on that and an even appearance really really interesting okay and it's also much more resilient when it comes to sunlight because of its gibby flora parentage so yeah you can really really expect that to grow i think this is the decora i think this one is the variegated version of the metallica correct me if i'm wrong but i think the metallica 
when you make it variegated, you get the decora. Okay, kind of related with the uh, Pearl von Herrnberg as well. Okay, so we have that. And we are going on to our next one. This is our variegated red chantilly. And some other call this the dragon fin. But I still have to make the leaves thicker. Okay, so a lot of people are asking me uh, as well how to make your succulent leaves thicker. This is actually getting thick right now. Okay, it has some weight to it already. So you can make it thicker if you give it a lot more sun and less frequent watering. That's what you can do. And once you make your plant's leaves thicker, okay, I think this one will start to appear as thick as this. Okay, I think it will start becoming as thick as this. Diamond state variegata. Once you manage to keep it growing and keep it stressed, so you can get more thicker leaves on that. This used to be a very thin leaf succulent, but now I'm making it more thick right now. Okay, but you can see it's really, really interesting. It has this nice pinkish color to it that is very even all over the plant. Okay, and you have the nice streaks of um, variegation on the leaves, kind of reminds you of a chocolate strawberry ice cream okay <laughs> really really nice and i think it will get more jagged edges once you make it grow a lot more and once you make it stressed that is the equivalent okay, red chantilly or dragon fin okay now um i don't know if this is a cheap okay probably this is not a cheap this is one of the more expensive ones that i bought really because it's also very slow growing but you can try it out it's a gibby flora hybrid so it's not that difficult to care for okay really really nice echeveria wow look at that and finally we're going to our last echeveria that i bought and i got a nice deal out of this because usually when you find sellers of this plant it's in a bigger size and a much more expensive price but i got a smaller plant a smaller version and a much more cheaper deal on this one this is our echeveria japan moon river you can see it kind of it's kind of similar with the decora but this is very different it has much more thicker leaves compared with the decora which is much thin this has harder bigger leaves and a much more brighter overall color palette on it and it's really really nice i think the variegation can get more prominent once you give it more light but this is really really interesting and i, I have been trying to get my hands on this plant because it's not the cheapest succulent ever but yeah, once you've managed to buy a small one, you can just make it grow. And that's what I also want to try with my succulents. Because if you buy a large enough um, succulent already, you don't have that room to study the plant because you weren't able to make it grow. But once you start with a smaller one and make it grow, that's when you learn to understand how it grows, how to water it properly, and also what type of potting mixes it it can tolerate because sometimes smaller succulents will be much more sensitive with the potting mix and i'm glad that i was able to establish it in this type of potting mix i added a alnus compost on it but still i have to repot it in a bigger container because this is already large growing it's already reaching to its edges okay so I'll probably i will move it up with my other large pot collection okay those are my larger pots yeah so we also have planted some new echeverias on there okay, really really nice but this is one of those larger growing echeverias because it's also another gibby flora hybrid okay and with the gibby flora hybrids you can also expect to not have any dropping of leaves very often this doesn't propagate by a leaf by the way i will just say a lot of the gibby flora hybrids doesn't propagate by a leaf they propagate by a stem cuttings so we have this one this one probably won't propagate by a leaf same with this one which is why they're more expensive echeverias because they don't propagate by a leaf and if you invest in these much more expensive gibby flora hybrids um, you can expect to sell them for quite a high price they won't drop in price very often because they are very slow growing and also very beautiful and doesn't propagate by a leaf so i still need to buy more variegated succulents really in this collection because there are still ones that i'm still saving for there is the variegated super bum and the variegated cubic frost those are the more expensive ones and i don't want to start away with those expensive ones if i still don't have experience with the more cheaper ones these varieties these variegated versions that i'm showing you they're actually the more cheaper succulents that you can buy here in the market so you can go check them out already uh, a lot of benguet propagators will be selling these plants 
So yeah, those are some examples. And if you want to know if a variegation stays in your place in the light conditions that you have, you can experiment with these succulents. Okay, so we have that. If you like those plants, please make sure to hit the thumbs up and also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I will see you on our next video. Bye-bye.